You gotta respect the man who loves his dog. But that aside, some gangsters are too clueless to survive long on the streets, and just like dogs, sometimes bite off more than they can chew. The boss of this criminal organization unwittingly betrayed his entire operation on two continents and lost nearly a half ton of high purity ecstasy by foolishly texting an unfortunate photo of his pooch. He thought his chats with fellow gangsters were impenetrable on a cool encrypted phone. His username there was Roll the Dice. Yeah, he nailed it. The mob reporter here with all the details of a headline grabbing underworld tale that turned into a screwball comedy. Bumbling British gangsters undone by careless dog pics and inadvertent selfies. Let me tell you about it. Meet Bob. I'm sure he's a good boy. Bob is a French bulldog, apparently beloved by a man who is hammering out a complicated plot to move $54 million in high-demand drugs halfway around the world. He and his gang were using a supposedly secret phone system called EncroChat. And why not? All the cool narcos were using it, which was exactly why penetrating it became a global police priority. When French cops finally breached the system in 2020, it revealed gangland plots being hatched all over the world, including in Bromley, southeast London, where Danny Brown lived with Bob. Brown, 53 at the time, seemed smitten with his pooch. So much so that in between messages about their 448 kilo load of ecstasy, he sent a photo of Bob to his gangmate, Stefan Baldoff, a 60-year-old German living in England. He sent this photo. When investigators sifting through Ancro Chat Chatter saw Bob, they didn't just see a dog, they saw a dog tag. And looking closely, they saw something on that tag that no gangster should ever be sending. Brown's phone number was on that tag. You can't see it here because prosecutors blurred the number before releasing this photo. This wasn't the only photo gaffe the gang made. They carelessly photobombed their own photos. Baldoff's salt and pepper hair is seen in the reflection on a shiny metal address sign in this photo he sent on EncroChat. His handle there was bold move. Indeed, it was. Brown was no better. His bald head and arched eyebrows can be seen in this photo, reflected in the bottom corner of his TV screen. At least it shows he takes horizontal photos. I hope the judge took that into consideration. These photos weren't just silly mistakes. They were fatal flaws. All of it proved that these men had control of the EncroChat phones that were arranging the drugs. The ecstasy was worth close to 22 million US dollars in Britain, police said, but could go for 54 million dollars if they could get it sold on the streets of Australia. They had a plan to get it there. They first paid 80,000 US dollars for a huge excavator. Another member of the gang, Leon Riley, 48, had a construction equipment company in Ireland and used that as cover to arrange for the digger to be moved from Leeds in the north of England down south to an industrial unit in Essex, which was arranged by another accomplice, Tony Borg, 42. It was 57-year-old Peter Murray's job to get the drugs, and Philip Lawson, 59, designed the hiding spots. He bought a high-end welder, cut a hole into the boom arm of the digger, lined the hiding spots with lead, and dropped in the E. The hole was resealed, repainted, and a sign company was paid to make large stickers to cover the weld lines. The digger was packed and ready to go in December 2020. Riley's company was used to pay a haulage firm to move it to England's Southampton docks, and then ship it by sea. It took seven weeks to make the journey to Brisbane, Australia. Their cover story was they were exporting it to sell it. They even set up an online auction to make it look legit. They rigged it so the people they were shipping it to would be the winning bid. They had a scare midway through. The auction attracted other potential bidders. Riley sent Brown a warning on EncroChat. There are six people watching it, he said. F and hell, that's not good, is it? Brown texted back. None of that mattered in the end. When the digger arrived in Brisbane, Australian Border Force officers x-rayed it and spotted the extra load, despite the lead shield. They cracked it open, removed 226 packages of MDMA, slipped an electronic tracker inside, resealed it, 
and sent it on its way to its originally intended destination, which was an auction house in Sydney. The buyer was a Sydney man in the construction industry. Authorities allege he first used the excavator to dig a trench and then drove the digger down into it in obscured sight lines to what was going on. For three days in May, two men searched inside that digger. Lawson sent them a hand-drawn diagram of where the drugs should be and instructions on how to get them out. The Aussies allegedly sent back a photo of the hollow arm of the digger. They soon realized something had gone amok. Ancro chat messages captured a frantic six-way chat trying to figure out who had taken the drugs. They assumed they had been stolen. When the secrecy of EncroChat was breached, law enforcement agencies in several countries were able to spy on millions of messages between criminals. While investigators could read the messages, the biggest challenge was putting real identities to the usernames. And that's where careless pics of Bob and unwitting selfies sank this gang. The British and Australian ends of the plot were both arrested in 2022. Ten men were pinched in all. During raids in Australia, police seized $1.2 million in cash. In London, Brown was carrying his EncroChat phone when arrested. Baldoff's phone was in his car. And when investigators searched Brown's home, Bob the dog was there watching. I hope the cops gave him a biscuit. The suspect's lawyers fought mightily in court to have the EncroChat data ruled inadmissible as evidence. That's partly why these trials have taken so long. They failed. A jury convicted six men in Britain, two others were cleared. The Australian charges have not yet been settled. On December 6, 2022, the British gang was sentenced to hefty prison terms. 28 and 26 years for ringleaders Baldoff and Brown. 24 years each for Murray the supplier and Riley the company owner. 23 years for Lawson the mechanic. And 15 years for Borg, who helped move the digger. You could say they dug themselves a very deep hole. Please consider tapping the thanks button on this video to help me out, or join me on Patreon. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It all keeps me rolling. Thanks for watching.